What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension overview for you. So in today's video we're checking out a brand new extension that helps you randomly place objects inside of your SketchUp models. So this extension was voted on by my supporters on Patreon. One of the perks of being a supporter on Patreon is you get to vote on the extension that I cover every week. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So there are a lot of situations I can think of where you'd want to randomly place objects. Most of the time when I end up randomly placing objects, it's for some kind of a rendering or something where I need to randomly place things like plants. Well, this brand new extension from Samuel T allows you to randomly generate objects inside of your SketchUp models. So you can find it on the Sketchication plugin store. I will link to this in the notes down below and it is a free extension. So note that there is the option to donate to the developer. So if you like this extension, please consider that as well. Um, if you're looking for more information on how this works, if you click on the more info button, that's gonna take you to a page that gives you a little bit of an overview right here as well as a little bit of documentation on this page, or there's also a forum thread with information about new releases and things like that. I feel like it's a little bit sparse, but we'll walk through how to use everything in the, um, in the video, and then uh, you should have a pretty good idea how this works. But check back to this forum thread, because there's always new information about new things that the developer is adding to it. So the way this extension works is when you first install it, if you go up to your extensions tab, it adds a toolbar um, for random entity generator. You can see how there's a number of different options in here of different things that you can work on. And we'll kind of walk through all of these, but, um, but in general, you can kind of manage some of your settings in this menu here, and then uh, you're going to actually place objects by interacting with them in your workspace. And you can see how there's options in here. There's a small proxy library in here that contains different proxies for uh, for Enscape and V-Ray, so you can bring those in. And then there's also tools in here for generating your random entities, and you can create proxies for Enscape, which is pretty cool. And then you can also um, set a random zone from an image. So if you want to use an image as the area where you're gonna randomly place objects you can do that and then finally you can manage those random zones here by clicking on this button but for now if we were to run this extension so if we were to click on the button for generate random entities it's gonna pop up this window right here and there's four different presets for the way that you can set different objects in random spaces so the first three all have to do with uh, placing plants and other things like that so the grass blocks, for example, puts all your objects a lot closer together than your flowers or your trees would. Um, but those are all for placing plants. And this last option, the Big Bang, is more for placing things inside of a 3D space. So if you just want to like randomly place things in 3D, you can do that. And so there's tools down here for um, setting the uh, different randomization settings. So the number of entities you create, the minimum maximum rotation as it randomizes, as well as the sizes. And also there's some altitude settings and some ability to do different things with different faces, which we'll talk about in a minute. And so the first thing you're gonna notice is if you run this tool, so if you just click in here and click okay, and you don't have anything else set inside your model, you're gonna get kind of this field of things in the 3D space, which could be kind of fun, and it's something that would be kind of fun to play around with, but it's not really ultimately very helpful, right? You just get this kind of like field of things. Um, they're just primitive models is all that they are. So they're things like, um, like cones and spheres and other things like that. So the reason for that is this tool, um, if you don't select anything, just places those objects by default. So if I was to select something like the grass blocks, for example, and we'll bring this down and not slow down our uh, computer, but if I was to do a hundred of these, this would randomly place a hundred primitive shapes just right here. So it's basically just kind of running and just putting stuff wherever. And so what we need to do in order to make this a little bit more useful is we need to set a random zone. So a random zone is gonna be the area where this is going to get placed. So um, for example, I have two that I've already created in here. So I'm gonna unhide my objects and we're gonna start with this simple one right here. 
So let's say we wanted to scatter or place a bunch of different objects on this face right here. Well, what we would do is we would right click on this face and we would click on the button for set as random zone. So when we set that as a random zone, what this is gonna do is this is gonna give you the option to set the kind of algorithm that you use. So it's either gonna use the center of the face or more random. So, and uh, in this case, it doesn't really matter. We'll go ahead and click on face center and click okay. And so what this has done is this has now added this object to the random zone list. So what that means is now if I run this, if I go to random entity generator, generate random entities, and let's say we were to use the flowers preset in this case and do 150. So now if we click okay, it's gonna place 150 objects on this face. But the problem with this is you can see how these are all just based on the center point of this face, which isn't necessarily what we want. If we were to do that over here, it wouldn't be as big of a deal, but over here, because you only have one face, it's just placing them all on this point. So what we wanna do is we wanna forget this. So go up to random entity generator. We wanna click forget the random zones. So that's gonna clear that list. And then we wanna do this again, but we wanna do this based on random, which is gonna be a little bit slower, but it's gonna be better. So we're gonna click on okay. And in this case, because it's only one face, it really doesn't take that much longer. But now if we were to run this, so generate random entities, flowers, 150, click okay. That's gonna randomly place these objects on this face. So you can see how now we're able to use a face to set a zone and the zone is where we're going to randomly spread or place our objects. So the only problem with this now is I don't really need a field full of random primitive shapes, right? Let's say I wanted to place something else like we'll just use my default model for right now. So let's say I wanted to randomly place that on this object. Well, we've already set this as a random zone. So all we have to do is right click on an object and click randomize and then just do the same thing. So we're just gonna do this again and we're gonna click okay. Well, you can see how that randomly places 150 of the object that I've selected. So in this case, that's going to be my default model. And so this works for more complex objects as well. So let's say, for example, this was a terrain that I had built a house on. Well, what we wanna do is we wanna set this as our random zone. So I'm gonna clear my random zones by going up to random entity generator, forget the random zones. And then within here, we're gonna right click on it and we're gonna click on set as random zone. And this is gonna give us an error message because it's gonna tell us that we need to actually select faces rather than groups. So we need to click inside of this and do a control A to select all. And then I'm gonna right click on this and click set as random zone. And in this situation, I'm also going to pick the random, but that means this is gonna take a while to actually calculate the random stuff inside of this uh, inside of this face. So we're gonna click on this and let it work for a minute. And it's probably going to be about a minute or so while it comes through here and actually calculates this. So if I click, you can see how it's thinking in the background. So just know that with a really complex terrain, you may wanna think about not using the random option because because this could, um, this could sit and spin for a long time. I would recommend saving your model before you set a complex terrain as a, a random zone. All right, so now this has been added to our random zone list. Well, if we were to click outside of this now and then do the same thing we did before, where we right click on our object and we click on randomize, and we'll go ahead and we'll do 250 in this case and we'll click on okay, you can see how this is gonna randomly place 250 of these objects based on that face. And so there's a couple different options that you can use in order to adjust the way these go in here. So right now, these are uh, facing straight up and down, which most of the time is what you're going to want, but there's also options in here. If you click on randomize, so there's options in here for, like for example, if we say to follow face normals, what that's gonna do is instead of placing these straight up and down, kind of dropping them on the face, what it's gonna do instead is that's gonna place these where they're actually gonna follow the direction of your ground. So let's say you were placing rocks or other things like that, you could place objects in here based on your face normal, so this will follow the curve of different faces if you wanted to do that.
And so another th cool thing that you can do in here is if you go up to the extensions and click on the proxy library, let's say we wanted to place some bushes in here. So let's say we wanted to place some azalea bushes and maybe we want to place, let's keep it small, let's go with some flowers. So let's say we wanted to place a bunch of white daisy flowers. You can see how when you click on these and bring them in, they're just brought in as boxes. Well that's because these are proxy models, meaning they're low polygon models designed to be spread in your SketchUp model without actually slowing everything down because if you've ever had a ton of geometry inside of SketchUp, you've seen that its performance isn't always the greatest. Well, what this will do is this will allow us to place these objects. So I'm just going to click on randomize and we'll go ahead and let's do it like this, but we'll say there's 250 and we'll go with the flowers preset. That ought to work pretty well for what we're doing here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to click on OK. Let's go ahead and set our maximum spot size to 1.25. That means this is randomly going to scale these down by 0.7 all the way up to randomly by 1.25. So anything in that gap for each object. We'll just click on OK. And what that does is that spreads these across this object. Well, right now this is kind of uninteresting until you run it inside of your rendering program, in this case, Inkscape. So if I was to run Inkscape, bring this over and obviously I haven't done anything to like set the rest of this up but you can see how this randomly placed these flowers and these bushes inside of this rendering so even though we only have a couple blocks over here we have a lot more objects inside of Inkscape that look a lot more realistic and so this would look better if we added grass in here and other things like this but you can see how this can be a really powerful tool for placing objects inside of your models and then one other thing I haven't really tested this but just on the forum post you can see how you can also set a random zone from an image so in this case um, he's play, he, he's used a star image and he's used this in order to place these objects just on the star. So if you have an image indicating where things need to go, you can import that and use that as your area as well. I'm really liking where this extension is going, especially because the developer seems to keep updating it with new uh, new features. So I will include the link to this extension in the notes down below. It's free, so go download it and check it out. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.